Hi. Uh, decided to give Molly a little days off today. Uh, if you want to have a look at some of her adventures, uh, you have to go over to Molly as a Quilter. Uh, you're looking at this on Treasure Quilt. Um, see some of Molly's adventures and what she's going to be up to in the near future. So what I'm going to do today is a bit of preparation for a class that I'm starting in September. So hopefully, fingers and everything else crossed, um, we'll all be back and running normal classes in September. So <clears throat> we're going to look at a couple of techniques and merge them together. I think it's called a mashup. Could be a mess up. So let's see how it goes. So what we're going to do first is look at a couple of different variations of using a plique. So I've got my background fabric. So it's it's a bit bigger than a fat quarter or maybe it's a fat quarter. So what I've done is I have just drawn out a little picture that I'm going to use in my plique. So I've drawn it just with a pencil, just a regular HB pencil and I've just drawn it freehand. Now you could use stencils, you can use whatever, you can plan out what your picture is going to be. Now the pencil marks for this technique, this is a reverse applique, are on the back of the fabric. So the right side has no marks on it. So this is the back of the fabric. Now this is for reverse applique. If you were going to cut out your shapes and just applique them on. You don't need to draw the shapes, you can just put them straight onto the front. But this is reverse. So just it's just a different technique. I'm just showing you a couple of variations. So I'm going to start with this cloud. So I've drawn the rough shape and this on the wrong side of the fabric. I've got my piece of white, which is going to be represent my cloud. And that is going to be positioned behind on the right side of the fabric. Now, because it's plain, there isn't a right or a wrong side of this, but it's sitting on the other side. Now, if, say, this fabric was patterned, which will happen a bit further on, then this has to be, the right side of the fabric has to face out because this will become the right side of the piece. So the wrong side is what we're going to sew, but the fabric, that will be the right side. So that's why it's called reverse. It's, it's just a different technique. It might not work for you. So I've lined these up and you can see my pencil line. So if I just angle you down, you'll be able to hopefully see what I'm going to do. Now, the difficulty is with the light under here. So if I just hold it up slightly. <clears throat> so here's the shape I'm going to go around. Now it's a cloud. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. So I picked this first. So what I've done is I've put an open toed foot. So if you can see, there's a big space in the middle there. So I can see where I'm going. So I've clipped that on. Now, if you haven't got one of those, use the basic flat foot that comes with your machine. You've got a big swing, so you can use zigzag stitches or embroidery stitches, and you'll be able to fit that in. So this is the area. You can't use a zigzag stitch on a quarter inch foot because you haven't got that swing. So you can choose those. Now, I've picked just a basic zigzag stitch but if you want to try out some embroidery stitches if your machine does those then that's perfect now you don't want the zigzag to be too big but i want it to feature it's because this is going to be seen on the finished piece so i've picked something that is not too big so i'm going to start stitching around my cloud. So let's see how we get on. Now I'm not in free motion, so I have to turn the fabric. Now the 
there's nothing sitting in between. There's no freezer paper, there's no bonder web, uh, which sometimes we will use on the other methods of a PK, which I will show later. I'm going to do that for other sections of this. You can hear me over the machine. It's a lovely quiet machine, this. So I'm just making sure that the fabric is sitting flat. We don't any puckers. Don't be afraid to keep stopping. Keep the needle down though when you do stop. Now you can see I have done zigzag stitch all the way around, but this is going to be the front. So what I have to do now is cut away all the excess fabric. So when I've done that, I'm gonna cut it close to that zigzag stitch, careful not cutting through it, and then it will be sitting on the right side. So I'll continue working with that till you can see it. Now eventually, when I have removed all the excess off the front, I can then also remove the excess off the back. So I've cut through, but you'll see that in a, in a short while. 